Hello and welcome back. This is the Offits channel and I am stuck in my house today and I'm going to break down the weekend's matches that I've watched on the DAZN app. So the DAZN app isn't actually released in Australia yet. I'm on the test flight beta community so I can get to check out the, the app. And just before I start on the breakdowns, I must say the DAZN app was terrible. The coverage was terrible. Not in terms of the commentators or the ring announcers or uh, how the production was. It was just the quality, the quality of the stream. It was like I was on 320p for a lot of, well, a lot of the card. About 80% of the card was in 320p. Even when I ended up just, you know, saying, oh, I'll, I'm, I'm giving up and I'm going to watch this later. I came back to it, watched the reruns in the DAZN app. And you'd think after it was all recorded and uploaded onto the DAZN app for everyone to watch, that it would be crystal clear. No, it was actually, again, as if it was streaming quality. It was 320p, everything was pixelated. You couldn't tell who was who half the time. The only, the only match that you could tell the difference was Chocolatito versus Israel Gonzalez because one's tall and one's light and one's shorter and one's darker. Now, that was the only time I could tell even when I was watching the recording, not the live stream. So that does need to be fixed. I'm not going to... I'm not going to sign up or subscribe to Design International or Design Australia unless that's fixed because I've already got a top rank subscription through the Fight app, you know, and they have good quality. They have high HD reruns. So if Design's going to compete for my dollar, albeit, you know, only it only costs a few dollars, well, then they're going to have to up their game because I think, you know, if, if correct me if I'm, um, if I'm wrong, but I think everyone had that same issue. Now, moving on to the cards, I was very, very excited to see a couple of my favourite fighters. Uh, I had I had my channel up before, but I wanted to do a refresh of the whole channel rebranding, so I deleted all the videos by accident. So it is what it is, but I did release a video previously, just a few weeks ago, on my favourite Mexican fighters. That being Estrada, that being Navarrete, and that being um, Julio Cesar Martinez. Now, two of the three were fighting, and Navarrete was actually on the telecast as well. He um, he was on there just throughout the rounds, just having a um, uh, having an interview in in, in the ring uh, with the president of the WBC. Um, Mr. Suleiman. So that was interesting to note. So all through my favorite Mexican fighters. And for those of you that's saying, why not Canelo? Well, I just find these guys uh, a lot more skillful in terms of just how they use their feet, uh, their their ring generalship. Um, but that's not to say that Canelo doesn't have all of those. I just like these fighters because they throw a lot of punches as well. And they're in the lower weight classes. I like the lower weight classes myself. So it's just preference. But again, we'll continue off. We'll start with the uh, Julio Cesar Martinez. And he did not disappoint. He is, um, you know, he didn't even warm up. He delayed the fight because he was just stretching. And he was just uh, a phenomenal fighter. He's he he reminds me of a a mini uh, Canelo Alvarez or a Mike Tyson. The way that he executes with such explosiveness. He's a power puncher. He's one of those talents where you can tell he he's just um uh, he's just his fluidity and explosiveness is just something that he puts every you know he punches through the target every single time. He, uh, he, the, the only thing that be, he can be criticized about is he has no jab. He's always looking to counter with a huge power punch, which makes him exciting. And I think that's why he's actually risen in terms of favorites amongst just casuals and boxing, um, boxing channels as well. They all, they all follow him. They all should follow him. It was his, um, it was his 
defense, his title defense of his uh, junior flyweight title, if I'm not corrected. But he is looking after that win to fight Estrada or Raymond Gonzalez. And I think pretty much he would have a great chance of beating him. He is a switch hitter. He switches back and forth through orthodox and southpaw stances. And it's, he's not like a Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford is probably one of the more famously known switch hitters in boxing. But Terence Crawford tends to stay in a certain stance throughout the whole fight once he figures out that that is the opponent's weakness. So he might start off for a round in, or maybe even a minute in first round in the orthodox stance. But then after that, he'll switch to southpaw and stay southpaw. So Julio Cesar Martinez is not like that. He will switch midway through a combination. He'll stay, He'll switch multiple times throughout the round. And it'll be so fluid and natural that you won't actually even see um, or notice that he's done it. He will just do it because it's the way he's been taught and it makes, him, makes it natural um, to do so while he's throwing in combination power punching, power punching combinations. So... He's my favorite fighter He at the, currently actually, like obviously um, excluding Pacquiao, he's, he's one of my most f favorite exciting fighters that uh, everyone should watch. But he's very short, he's only a small dude, five foot two or five foot, uh, five foot two I think. So uh, he's one to watch out for the lower weight classes and hopefully he gets to fight the likes of Inoue, if he ever gets that heavy, um, obviously Roman Gonzalez and Estrada. So moving on to the Estrada um, and Roman Gonzalez fights. Roman's uh, Chocolatito, Chocolatito Gonzalez. So Sergio Amora kept on, kept on correcting his uh, colleague commentator on how to pr pronounce Chocolatito. The pronouncer was pronouncing it Chocolatito, and it's actually Chocolatito. Um, and I find that hilarious, uh, but Raymond Gonzalez, he looked very impressive against the younger, uh, when I say younger, 10 years almost his junior in Israel Gonzalez. He almost reminds me of a, um, you know, a, uh, I was going to say Fernando Vargas, but um, Vargas that fought Pacquiao, that fought Bradley, I forgot his name, um, that fought um you know, that fought uh, he, uh, Mikey Garcia, who was actually in the fight as well. He was there, and he got interviewed like Navarrete in between rounds. Um, but Jesse Vargas, that's the name. He reminds me of Jesse Vargas. Very tall, very long, very lean compared to his opponent. Um, so Roman Gonzalez went in there, did his job. It's funny, when he sits in between rounds, he just looks like an old, small man. But then when he's fighting, he's just like the, he looks like the younger, fresher guy. It's um, it's so contradictory to the fact that what you're seeing in between rounds is different to what um, is is showcased during the fight. Now, Roman Gonzalez, everyone's written him off um, since he lost twice to Sarisaka Rongvasai, uh, the the fighter from Thailand. However, he has bounced back with wins over the English. Boxer Kafai, where he won the title, which he holds right now. I think it's the WBA title. And that sets him up for an impressive fight with Estrada. Now, moving on to the Estrada versus the Quadras fight. That was a hellacious fight. The design design actually put up some highlights on their YouTube channel and it doesn't do them justice. I, I, I reckon it doesn't do them justice. They skipped a couple of rounds, which well, they showed like the first round, the fifth round, and then the 11th round. But every single round in between that, two, three, four, five was great. Um, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 was great. 12 was great. All the rounds were great. Action pack, back and forth. I don't think it even made 11 and 12, it made, to, it made 11, but round one, back and forth, seesaw action, it looked like Quadras was getting um, the best of him, and he did, towards about 10 seconds to go in the first round, he did knock out, he did knock down Estrada, um, and it looked like a, a very good shot, he stumbled, it almost looked like he could have gone down a second time, but they ran out of time, and throughout the fight, um, especially before the fight, they were saying a lot of people thought that the um, the Quadras won the first fight between Estrada and Quadras, 
and that looked like it was going to be the storyline going in after the first fight. The second round was back and forth action. A lot of them, um, you could tell actually, Estrada reminds me a lot of a lot like Juan Manuel Marquez compared to the both fighters because Quadras, while he was fast, he was shoe shining a lot of his shots and he was getting a lot of combinations off. But Estrada, he was looking like the heavier puncher. Every time it hit, you could hear the thump because because no crowds, you can actually hear the um, the punches, the impact of the punches. And Estrada's just sounded more crisper, more thudding. Whereas uh, Quadras was just shoe shining, lots of shots were landing on both sides, very accurate, both fighters, but it just sounded like as the fight continued, these harder punches were going to have a lot more effect. Um, and the body shots by the left hand to the body, the left hook to the body by, uh, by the Estrada was doing a lot of damage throughout the whole fight. We're going to skip through to the 11th round. The 11th round was the KO round. Estrada knocked uh, Quadros down once, and then the second time he actually fell on his face. It looked like he was going to be out, but Quadros got up because he's a, a Mexican warrior. Got up to meet the bell, and then he started firing shots back and forth through to Estrada and it looked like he'd recovered fully. He was throwing some bombs like he was landing too and it looked like he'd got his senses back, it looked like he'd got his feet underneath him um, but then he got clipped again in the centre of the ring and that's always, um, you know, he, he had a few stumbles, he stumbled a couple of feet backwards and then the ref came in and he stopped the fight. So it was a good stoppage, um, there wasn't any complaining from either side. Um, especially Quadra side, but um, yeah, it was a great fight. It was, um, I reckon it was better than the Sepeda fight that was claimed fight of the year because this one here was a lot more action throughout the whole fight. The um, the Sepeda fight, there was, um, it wasn't as highly skilled in my opinion just because these two, Quadras and Estrada, are technicians. They're in the small little weight division, so they're going to throw more punches. So, I reckon this was a better fight. If this is going to be fight of the year, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Um, it did have three um, three knockdowns and then knockout to end of the fight. So it should put it in that category of fight of the year. Now, going forward, actually, I'll, I'll just touch on the the interviews with Mauricio Suleiman and Navarrete and also Mikey Garcia. So Navarrete was there. He, he looked dapper. He had this strange um, half... Justin Bieber, like myself, half um, half shaved head up to here. It, was, um, it looked pretty fresh. It looks good on a young person. Um, but he was just talking about how um, he wants to come back. He's ready to fight already. And I don't know if he's got anyone in line yet. He did just come off a, um, a win just recently. And two of, um, I think... Dog Bay is actually going to be fighting. I just read this more uh, today. He's going to be fighting the M Mick Conlon from um, Ireland. So that's going to be a very, very big European fight. And that's coming up on the 1st of December, if I'm not corrected. And that was pretty much an interesting interview. Not, not too much to take away, but Mikey Garcia, his interview was actually um, revealing. He did reveal that he was eating a lot of tacos and he was. Um, not training so much, um, spending most of his downtime on racetracks and racing his logo cars and eating a lot of tacos. And that was pretty, 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 pretty good. And he, until he actually mentioned that he did, uh, he did officially agree to fight Pacquiao back in June or July, but because of the COVID that was postponed, similar, I, I imagine to what, um, Casemiro and Inoue had they had an agreement to fight they were going to fight um but COVID came and then it just put that fight on on um you know on the ice so Mikey did reveal that there was a fight they'd signed to fight they didn't publicly announce it so I don't know how much that is but he did um you know there has been recent interviews with Fight Hype on YouTube where he has discussed that he is the next one to fight Manny Pacquiao, and he very he seemed very adamant. 
that was straight after the Conor McGregor uh, news that Conor was going to fight Manny Pacquiao next. Um, but Mikey Garcia revealed that he was the next one to fight. And then this interview where he revealed that he actually was meant to fight him in June or July, um, you know, is a, a, a bit of a breaking news to me. So that's going to be exciting if um, he's going to fight. But Pacquiao's going to be probably going to be fighting next year and he's going to be, what, 42, 43 years old. So um, it should be a, a achievable win for Mikey Garcia. He did have that win over Jesse Vargas and he, him and Pacquiao share that same opponent. But yeah, that was very interesting news to see him actually come out and state officially that they had scheduled a fight in um, mid this year that was put off. So he's going forward to that. Um, hopefully Pacquiao picks, picks another title holder so he can unify before he ends. Uh, a lot of people are saying Mikey Garcia doesn't deserve the the Pacquiao fight, and in my opinion, he doesn't because he's only had two fights at welterweight. One, he was, um, you know, he was beaten thoroughly by Errol Spence Jr., and the other one was with Jesse Vargas, where a lot of people said that Jesse Vargas was winning most of the fights, albeit Mikey Garcia did knock him down. Um, but it was a decision, and yeah, it was, um, I, I just think that he hasn't done enough, and he's probably going to struggle a bit like Lomachenko in the upper weight classes, and that's another story, the, the, the Lomachenko fight, he did struggle, um, with, with Tifumo Lopez in the weight class, and everyone's saying Pacquiao is actually shorter than both Mikey and Lomachenko. Um, so that is, um, that befuddles me as to why these guys are struggling at their weight classes. And a lot of people say, oh, well, Manny Pacquiao has been there for a lot longer in the world of weight division, but yeah, he's shorter and he did start at 106. His first, uh, his first fight was at 106 pounds. So, um, if Mikey Garcia struggles against, uh, he's, if he struggles against, um, fighters in 147 pound. Maybe Pacquiao, his age difference might be the equaliser. So that's going to be the storyline going forward if they do fight. But that is a. I'm going to wrap this video up now because it's a seven. It's been a long video, and yeah, I will catch you on the next one. I'm going to start doing a lot more videos. So that's my thoughts on this weekend's design card. Next next week, we have, or the end of this week, actually, we have some great fights. We have the Leo Santa Cruz, and we have Javonta Davis, and then we also have Inoue versus the Australian that I'm going to cover because I'm in Australia, Jason Maloney. So get ready and get your popcorn ready for for um, John Real Casimiro's Twitter. I wonder if he blows up after that fight. So, all right, I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Bye.